I actually didn't even know where Mount Everest was. <laughs> 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 and, uh, That's so, awesome. Oh, God, I, I love was, it. I was, Hello and welcome to Level Up with Dwayne Pierce. My dream is to improve the residential building industry for all involved. Throughout this podcast, we're going to be chatting to all types of industry experts to make sure that builders, tradies and clients all have a fantastic experience. G'day guys, so we're back here in the shed for another episode of Level Up. So um, we're here today with Justin Andrews, he's a very good mate of mine. We've uh, known each other for, oh, shit, it'd have to be getting close to seven years, eight yeah. years, wouldn't it? Yep, probably 2015, um, yeah. Justin's a fantastic builder, um, does sort of high-end homes renovations and stuff here in uh, South East Queensland, Brisbane. Um, Justin and I actually met from... Um, we one of our suppliers um here in brisbane uh we'd we'd done a lot of work so we won an overseas trip and um the rep that i work with um pulled out basically the afternoon before we were meant to get on a plane and go to vegas and he goes <laughs> really sorry mate like i knew no one there was like 22 blokes i think going 22 bu- or 18 builders and four four staff i think it was yep and um he goes, look, I've, a, a mate, of, his best mate passed away and he's like, I can't come. I, I'm really sorry, um, but I know this bloke you'll get on really well with. And uh, I met, met Justin at the airport the next morning and we've pretty much been mates ever since. We had, had a great trip. Um, learned a lot. Yep. <laughs> Certainly did. It was an eye-opener anyway in Las Vegas. Uh, what goes in Vegas stays in Vegas, I believe. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> But um, yeah, we've, we've become really good mates from that trip and we've stayed together ever since. So um, Justin, tell us a little bit about yourself, mate. Look, everything we're doing on these podcasts is about just helping the industry. Um, I guess letting younger guys that are trying to get in the industry, tradies or builders, like understand the hard times that yep. we all go through. But also those hard times can turn into a magnificent life, business, yep. career, all those types of things. So mate, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into the building business? Well, my old man made me do it, actually. Got into becoming a carpenter, actually. Said, you know, yeah. you get, I wasn't really university-focused sort of fellow from school. So, you know, I did year 12 and came out of school. And my old man got me an apprenticeship with the Queensland Master Builders and uh, did my apprenticeship there. Yeah. Uh, stayed there for four years. Moved down the Gold Coast. Did, you know, most of my 20s through the Gold Coast. And then met my wife and then moved back to Brisbane um and then pretty much you know started my uh, how i actually started my business was uh my wife always wanted to be a stay-at-home mum so for me i was actually supervising for a uh for a a project builder at the time and i decided that you know that uh, the money wasn't going to cut it for for me to actually support my wife and you know have a good life for my family so i decided to start my own business and uh pretty much my daughter was six months old we had another one coming as well and yeah. uh, you know, I, I started my my own business, and uh, I mean that was I'll be honest, I, I pretty much core abode my my other baby that I didn't actually have. You know that you've sort of got to nurture it on the way. You know you got to burp it, you got to do all sorts of stuff to yeah. to make it into a you know pretty much another child that you sort of made throughout those years. You know. So how, did you do your apprenticeship the traditional way with with one builder? And- no, see with the master builder it wasn't actually. I it, it was actually like an apprenticeship scheme. Um, I sort of went out to a few builders, but then I did the bulk of my apprenticeship um, through a fellow that uh, we ended up doing everything. And that was a good thing about it. We, we did the footings, we set the house out, we, yeah. we, we, we tied the steel, we did, we didn't, the only thing we didn't pour the concrete for the slab, we did pour the concrete for the footings. So we did everything from start to finish. And that was a good thing because I learned a lot through that. You yeah, know? and I think for me, that's a really a massive part of the industry these days that's getting lost. Like we, um, like we do that, we, our boys get to learn everything. And I, I really feel, and you would know yourself, like I, re- I really struggle putting new car, like you, you put an ad out for carpenters mm. and you get these people come to want to get a job. And there's people out there calling themselves carpenters that have spent their whole apprenticeship, whole career doing like uh, lockups or doing fit outs or doing yeah. framing. They're not carpenters. No. Like a carpenter to me 
or a builder to me, like you do everything. Yeah. Like, and uh, it's a shame the industry's gone that way a little bit. And I, I feel like, like someone that comes to get an apprenticeship with blokes like yourself or myself, um, it's incredibly valuable. Like, yeah. I, don't, I think a lot of guys take it for granted, like that yep. work for you or I, that yep. like what they're learning is a dying trade. Yeah. Like, because it's, it's not far off where. Uh, like one per like it, we've seen it with plastering now too like plast like there's a sheeting crew and there's a yep. corner screw there's a setting crew like um like the days of people being true craftsmen and knowing everything are, are getting pretty limited but yep. um and so what what uh obviously so you jumped in the deep end you, you started a boat and and went for it like what what were some of the struggles that you went through starting a business oh just learning different personalities for me like yep. you know you get different people clients you get different um you know trades and whatever just actually learning how to deal with people a little bit better than actually you know you know it, that that was the hardest thing for me i think you know i knew my craft yeah and i i knew and you know, i knew you know enough about other trades and it's just about managing people that's the f hardest thing i felt when first starting that was managing a whole yeah. range of things, you know, right through your yeah. suppliers, right through to your, you know, your your clients, everything. Do you know what I mean? People's expectations. Yep. Yeah, and that, that, I found that was the biggest thing for me to understand and understand how to read people as well. Like yeah. you, you, you sort of, and you can really read a situation. I look now, I feel I can read a situation better than I ever did 15 years ago. Where when you yeah. go into a meeting with ever or whatever, you actually can see where it's going, and you can sort of then negotiate. A little bit better yeah. than what you did in the past, you know. That's yeah. what I found. So what? What? Um, so like contracts, all that sort of stuff. Like you, you had your head around that, or oh, you that's some... that was pretty. That you, I learned that pretty quickly in the in the, deep, <laughs> in the first part. You know what I mean? Like not not end. not knowing the contracts as well as I did. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, but then using that contract to the right way as well using it the best for you as well like there's a lot of things in there that you know i've only learned over the years me immersing myself within that contract actually yeah. utilizing it better to my advantage you know not and and you know also letting the client know exactly what's in the contract as well and really educating them more even before you sign that contract and i think that helped as you well, know in the last four a, to five years business, yeah like you you and I think that's probably a hard part for a lot of people. Like you, you've got to you've got to change your mindset from being a builder to being a building business. Yep. And uh, yeah, it, definitely education is yep. a massive thing, eh? Like getting your clients to know more and and all that sort of stuff. And they, so like for a young guy that's thinking about or a tradie that might, or a young guy that's thinking about um, either getting into the industry or going that next level, getting their builder's license. Um, like, what would you recommend? Like, I know. Like you've done a lot, I've done a lot as well. Like we, like we got to a point where we did extra training. Yep. Um, like I look back and really wish I had had the mindset to do more of that training, possibly even before or during while I was getting my builder's license. I think it would have helped me and saved me a shitload of money. Oh yeah, I totally agree with that. <laughs> but um, like, is there any anything in particular you'd recommend to those guys that they they go and do? Like any courses or mindset or even even. Like for me, a big part of it was working on myself. Yeah, uh, that, that's true. And like, you know, in saying that, we were just having a discussion before about working on myself, you know, <laughs> you know, which I've been doing that for the last nine weeks, which is, you know, it, that's been awesome. But for me, I think for young guys that, you know, when you first start off, you're gung-ho. You're straight in, boots all, you know, everything's <laughs> going flat knacker, yeah. you know, you, oh, look at this, you know, it's all going great. But then, then you hit that curveball with a client and you get that client that, you know, isn't the ultimate client you want and then it sort of starts going south then you start going well is it me yes it is you because the thing is you actually haven't put things in place to stop that to happen do you know what i mean so yeah, for yeah. me i think yeah, you, you gotta need, own it yeah you do yeah, and yeah. the thing is you've got to understand that you know a lot of the stuff does happen because it can, you know any problems i've had with the client i've always gone and looked back and gone you know what i could have done that better there and i could have done that better there and then that that but then it comes that with experience as well well i've got the gray hair do you know what i mean is because i've had <laughs> so much you know that you know that it, you know life experience that you you tend to put systems in place so that that doesn't happen again you know yeah. but for me i think you really 
for one thing, if you want to start out, is actually read a contract and yeah. understand that contract from start to finish because then you can utilise that contract to your advantage. But then also it's about systems as well. Well, Dwayne and I, you know, yeah. we worked with a fellow that actually helped us in like, you know, it, it got a bit stale after about four months or five months for me with the guy who could get rehashing the same sort of thing. But look, in the first three or four months, I think I got a lot out of it and it put a lot of systems in place for me yeah. that, you know, there's a lot of KPIs I have for my staff members. I have state KPIs for my in, internal staff members. And then also for me, I actually, you know, the scheduling that I have now that, you know, it's sort of set and forget. It's all there ready to go. Yeah. And it's just getting it stuff freedom. out of your head, yeah. right, into a system that your head's not so clouded so that you can actually then, you know, be, so gives, have more clarity. the freedom, which is why you got into business in the first place. Yep. Like I think we all get stuck in that cycle where we we don't know where to start or what to fix yeah. first and, and you're just you're chasing that next job, you're not quoting properly, you're chasing yep. cash flow, you're, you're having trouble with clients and it just becomes this vicious, vicious cycle, doesn't it? And then, it does. Um, like I, I would recommend to all young guys or people wanting to get into it that, You've just got to pick one thing, don't you? And sort of, and I think for me anyway, like you, you pick one thing and you work on it, and you see the improvement that one thing makes, and that yep. just drives you to go, well, shit. If I do, if I fix this and I fix this and I fix this, and before you know it, like it, it, when you own it and you put in the time, the effort, and the money, because I think a lot of people, um, like I know you have, like it, a lot. I think a lot of people shy away from spending money on themselves. Um, I don't know why. Like, well, I, I did, I guess, for a long time. Yeah. But like, the more money, time, and effort you put into yourself, everything else just flourishes. Yep. Like, it's it's unbelievable. Yep. Um, Great. So, mate, tell us a little bit. Like, obviously, that's um, that's a while ago now. So, you, how long's the boat been going for? I think this is my fourteenth or fifteenth year that I've been running for myself. You know. So, yep. and like in that time, it's you know, and like you're saying, you know, spending your money on yourself. Like I probably for first what nearly. 10 years I suppose I used to do all the admin I used to do everything and then and that made me realize as well that I probably wasn't running my company as efficient as what I probably could have so then I actually then employed somebody doing that sort of thing and that's made a big difference as well like I know everyone's got to you know pay for someone to be in the office but for me that's really cleared up a lot of stuff for me is that that, um was that decision because you I'm always interested to know this because I know why I did it, but were you doing everything yourself because you thought you couldn't afford to employ That's someone? exactly what it was. It was about affording somebody, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that and is going, oh, now it's going to take down from my bottom line and, and, and whatever. But the thing is, but the realise is that, you know, because then, it, you know, that the person I've currently got has worked for a project builder before. So she's come with some yeah. ideas, which actually helped me, you know what I mean? Yeah. As well, you know, so actually, you know, and she's the same age as me as well. So she's a bit, you know, seasoned, so seasoned as much as I am, you know? Yeah. So it's, um, cause that, that's exactly what it was for me. Like I, I knew I needed someone, but I, I thought, how the hell am I going to pay for anyone else? Yep. Like I'm only just sort of breaking even as it is, but, mm. uh, it's about getting your head around the cost and then allowing that cost to cover that person and yep. just charging what you need to charge to mu- for your business to make money. That's right. Um, and yeah, because at the end of the day, you can't do everything. No. Like, and you're so much better off putting your time into what you're good at, what you're efficient at, what's yep. going to make your business the most money and paying someone else to do. Because I know like, I, was, I was shit at all the office and yeah. admin part and at, the, and at the end of the day, I thought I couldn't afford those staff members. Oh, for a long time there, my wife Camille and I, I know uh, your wife tried to work in the business for a while. It um, it doesn't do anyone any favors. All no. it does is stop you from getting ahead mm. and stops the business growing, doesn't it? Yep, it does. And the thing is, but then you can then, like you know, we always say, everyone says, you know, the big working in your business. You know what I mean? <laughs> Instead, you know, or working Work on, on your business. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it does. It allows you to have that breathing space to you know, put those systems in place, you know what I mean? Because then, you know, you can pass on that to your admin person that can help you sort of systemize in, in, a, in, in all this Excel spreadsheets and all this yeah. sort of stuff, which I've got yeah. no idea what I'm doing there <laughs> in computers at all, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. And like you pass on to someone that can do it and then it just, yeah. and then it makes it better for you, you know? Yeah, definitely. The um, So you look, I, I've definitely seen you grow just since we've been mates like i um you used to be pretty when we first met you were pretty hot-headed yeah. like i didn't take uh didn't take much to make you blow your top but um 
which I've seen when we went to Everest as well. But um, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that was uh, quite funny. <laughs> I'll tell you the story. Yeah, so Do we'll, you want to we'll, hear, you hear we'll, the story? We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. But um, <laughs> so I guess just quickly before we move on to a bit more our personal stuff and about you, and uh, like you've got a fantastic um, uh, thing in your business on your website. Like, like is it the 10 steps to a renovation? Yeah, or? so what I did is I sort of, when, when COVID came around, I sort of spoke to my marketing fellow that said, well, don't we do a renovation series for everyone? So it goes through the whole step process about, yep. you know, you know, all the consultants, you know, so each one talks about every consultant. I actually then yep. interviewed my designer that I deal with and also a town planner yep. as well, you know, and then it's just to give you insight, you know, around what you need to do for renovations and, and whatever. So there is a renovation series I have on there that, you know, that you can link on to that sort of educates you a little bit around the, what, you know, what you need to think about doing renovations and whatever. Yeah. No, if anyone's interested, go and check it out. It, it's really good because it gives you a lot of valuable information and, I think um, like this generation uh, and like you and I, so Justin, we've got a uh, builder's breakfast group we catch up with quite regularly. But um, like one thing that's really held us back, like builders don't talk to each other. No. Um, so I think like these groups we've got where uh, we catch up with other like-minded builders and we all have a chin wag. We talk about the, the, our problems and we give each other advice and um and probably most importantly, we, do, we just have a general chit chat to get things off our chest as well. But um, so, um, like, yeah, what, like, you've been running a good business now, um, like, you're smashing out the good quality projects. Um, so, your, your business, like, Abode, really, its focus is um, like renovations, yeah, and mainly lift, renovations. lift and builds. Yeah, mainly lift and builds. That's what I mainly do, you know what I mean? For me, I, I know my sweet spot, you know, I've worked out yeah. what my blue house is, you know, <laughs> sort of from, you know, sort of 350 yeah. to 750. That's where yeah. I know that, you know, I've got all the systems in place where that's where I make my most profit, I, yeah. I believe, you know. And, and, you, you know, and your staff know what they're doing. Yeah, and the staff yeah. got an idea what they're doing as well, you know. And I mean, I'm only a small crew, you know, I was bigger. Up so until how, COVID. How's your, tell us about your crew. What, do, what size crew you got? So I've only got four guys yep. uh, and then fifth of me as well, you know. But, you know, we still – I can't believe it. I worked out – this is not a word of a lie. I've worked, I turned over 300000 less with half the amount of people in the last 12 months than I did previous. Yeah. So the team's got far more efficient. Yep. Um, so that, that's obviously a, a testament, mate, to your systems and your processes and, and your team. Like yep. you and like we've we definitely found that a couple of years ago as well. We we hard, well yeah halved our team, almost did the same turnover and made more money. Yep. So let's let's move on to get away from the work because um, like I think we've got a lot of valuable information there that's going to help a lot of guys out. So um, Justin and I we we met on that trip to Vegas, um, had an absolute cracking time. Um, Justin had a few nightmare stories, I guess, from that trip, but <laughs> we figured those out, but. Um, it was only, uh, it was a couple of years after that, I think a mate of mine, uh, put it on me to go to Everest base camp. And, um, at the time when he asked me, um, <laughs> I actually didn't even know where Mount Everest was. <laughs> and, uh, That's uh, awesome. Uh, guys, I, love I, was, it. I was like, oh, well, yeah, I, I know. I, know, I didn't I've know heard, that one, but I've anyway. heard about Mount Everest. I'll jump on the bandwagon. Let's give it a crack. Um, and like for me that trip was life-changing yeah. like it just it changed my life i come back from it i felt like a new person and like leading up to that trip i was definitely putting time and effort into myself and into my business but since that trip i've, I've just gone gangbusters but um like we we shared some pretty good times on that yeah. trip so yeah. i invited Justin along um we had an incredible time and we learned a, like we learned a lot didn't we like we it, did. was, it was sort of three weeks of uh, guess being very close to each other, um, got to see each other, have a few nightmares and hallucinate and dealing with bloody, uh, um, what was it called? The, Oxygen, the, the, the altitude sickness. The altitude sickness, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a really good trip. But tell us, Justin, we touched on it before, like uh, when I was talking about you being a bit of a hothead. Um, tell, tell us what happened there. Is you talking about when, when I grabbed that guy at the, at the bar? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got this guy, we were out the, the, the night, we come back and we were at, still at Lukla and we went out for a drink and uh, this, I actually had my music going on the actual, uh, and uh, this young fella was coming over to try and take over the music and everything yeah. and, and then he said something about, 
to me, and, and he and he and he I think, called, you, I think he called Grandpa. Yeah, he called me Grandpa. <laughs> and so then I just grabbed him by his neck and just put him up against the wall, and <laughs> and, I, and I thought, okay, I might need to stop here, so I stopped because I was going to do something uh, I was going to regret. Yeah, we're in the Himalayas at Lukla. We just conquered, gone to base camp, got back there. The the fog come in, we got stuck. Yep. We ended up in a bar all night that was getting run by a 14 year old. That was a 14 year old. <laughs> that was the best photo ever. 14 year old was like head on the bar at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, it was so fantastic. The, yeah, the 14 year old couldn't um, <laughs> couldn't keep up. He, uh, it was past his bedtime, so he he fell asleep on the bar, and we kept going to the very early morning, and ended up just leaving him a pile of cash on the on the countertop. Yeah, so uh, it, was, it was awesome times, but yep. um, for me that that trip just was something I never ever would have thought of doing mm. uh, put me way out of my comfort zone yep. um, and just being with like we ended up with an incredible bunch of guys yeah, like there, was, there was 13 blokes um, and I never like I'd, I'd played a bit of sport in that in my younger days and been in those team environments but just being in that scenario like uh, we all dealt with altitude sickness having to help each other out support each other yep. um, it was it was life changing for me, and I know you got a lot out of it. Yeah, I did. I, it was unreal. Like just to, I know it's just the whole thing. It was for me. That was the thing for me. That was just instead of me being, you know, owner of a boat and a father and a husband and whatever, I was actually did something for myself. You know, and like, yep. I never probably thought I'd actually go and do that. I mean, I always thought, oh, that'd be awesome to do. But then, yeah. you know, you told me about it. And then before I knew it, you already booked me in. And then I said, okay, well, I'm going now. Do you know what I mean? So I couldn't get out, you know. So, but then you know, for me, it was the lead up as well, you know, like with the guys. I felt, you know, we yeah. walked every every week together and I got to know a lot of other people, you know, you know, who own businesses as well. And then, you know, you talk about that and, you know, you hear about their trials and tribulations. And then, you you know, for me, it was just, uh, it, it, the guys that we went with were just absolutely awesome dudes, you yeah, know. Like the people, uh, lifelong friends, I reckon. Yeah, you know, it's an incredible and, bunch. Yeah, and we've actually like it's been three years, just over three years now since we did that trip, and we we have a regular catch up. But yep. um, like you just touched on it, like even just that leading up to that. So I think that's really important for anyone that's listening. Like um, a big part, I, I think, of the change in in myself, which has allowed me to be a, a better husband, better father, better business owner. Um, and be- better mate is is just having that regular catch up with with blokes like, yeah. and talking about everything but work. Yeah, like um, just getting all the shit off your chest, being able to um, like I think the group of guys that we catch up with, um, it's just really good being able for for I think blokes keep so much bottled up. Mm. Um, it's really good just to be able to talk. And get shit off your chest. Mm. Um, doesn't matter what it's about, but that 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 Everest trip really um, was the start of that for me, yeah. I think. And then, um, like obviously, and then in the last few weeks. So, for, like for you guys out there, Justin. Um, uh, so we're here in Queensland. There's a bit of a thing going on at the moment between the New South Wales and Queensland border with with COVID. Uh, Justin actually lives down in North New South Wales. Works here in Brisbane. And because of what's going on, he actually hasn't seen his family for a bit of, over ten weeks now. Yeah, yeah just on ten weeks, um, yeah. which is just terrible, to be honest. But um, in that time, mate, you've you've just been focused on yourself. Yep. And um, Justin and I ended up doing a uh, it's called Cool to Be Conscious. Um, a couple of young guys run it on the Gold Coast and Sunshine Coast. We went and did their um, what was it Cool to Be Conscious experience? Or yeah, something. full day event, and yeah, that was amazing. Yeah, so. I've been doing the cold showers for for quite a while now, but um, we did a cold bath. Tell tell us what your thoughts are, Justin, since you've done that, and and I know you're doing a lot of cold baths, a lot of breathing and stuff. Yep. But tell us the benefits that you're seeing because like you're you're a big big boy, big tough bloke. I think people uh, it'll be good to hear your story about what you're doing. So about. it has been ten weeks for me. I just feel like I've worked on myself yeah. in the last nine to ten weeks, where I've never. I've never really done that. Like I've always, you know, he's, oh, she'll be right, mate. You know what I mean? Get on with it, you know, and try and, you know, and, you know, my parents were like that. Everything was just swept under the carpet. You yeah. never talked about it or whatever, you know. And I did go, I did have depression probably two to three years ago before yeah. I went to Everest. Um, I actually was on medication and everything just, you know, yeah. everything just got me down and everything. So for me, 
and then you know Dwayne and I went this thing the other week. Oh, mate, oh, I've had a re- revelation from this thing. It's just yeah. it's but it's pushed me to this trajectory that I just getting more and more out of. So then I started doing this Wim Hof breathing, which this is sort of based around this cool to be conscious thing, you know, yeah. and then and doing the cold showers like Dwayne was talking. And then for me, it's just, um, I don't know, I feel like I'm, and, that, and that's one thing I can say to anyone who is listening, the younger guys that, you know, try and have that space for yourself. You know, yeah. like you've got everyone coming at you every day with all these different builders, you know, everyone will, your staff and whatever yeah. you just need to have time to yourself so you can have that breathing space that you know yeah. whatever you need to do like go for a walk or or have that breathe i mean i'm not telling you to do this wim hof thing but i mean <laughs> but i'm just saying it 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 has it's, changed my life in the put, last nine weeks put um put time and energy into yourself yep. and it's it's incredible how quickly and fast things will change around you when you're right isn't yeah it? Like, and, I can feel that. Like I feel all the energy around me yeah. is changing and then everything that's around me. And like even though I'm not seeing my family, but the connection I'm having with my family is even though it's just text messages and, and everything and whatever, I, I feel the closest I've ever been in my family because I've yeah. actually have invested by doing things that I probably have never done before. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and for me, life is about connection. You know, and like yeah. if it's connection with your staff, connection with, you know, you know, your wife, with your kids, whatever. Yeah. If you try and have that good connection with people, you know, of you know, and you know, genuine connection, yeah, I think that, you know, you, you get a long way in life. Yeah, no, I think it's incredibly powerful. Like I've um I've definitely come around the last few years. Like I I wasn't really, like I, I used to get very uncomfortable like when people were trying to hug, like I wasn't a hugger, like hugging was for like close family or your wife or whatever, but um I've definitely opened up a lot more to that in yep. the last few years and just even even st- simple things like that like when you're finishing a project or you're, you're at a milestone a project and a client wants to give you a hug like just opening up and being able to comfortably have that hug yep. like has made a big difference like yep. you, you do you get that connection with them and it's incredible after that hug um because like now we get like I get quite a lot of clients when we're signing a contract we want to have a hug and like it's incredible that connection after the hug you're so much closer yeah like you you yeah i don't know what it is but um yeah definitely putting time energy into yourself is a game changer yep. like i believe and so with a hug right i just tell you my wife's yep. very spiritual right yep. and she says with a hug a hug should go as long as 20 seconds yeah if you try and do a hug for like five seconds you actually don't get that yeah. Heart to heart connection. If you try and have a, a a hug with somebody and try and have that twenty second hug, you'll yeah. see and you'll feel the difference between yourself and yeah. that other person. It is massive. Yeah. Oh, mate. Look, I've even seen it with uh, with my wife. Like I, I, I was like I I love chicks. Like I'm I'm a bloke. I love chicks. Like I love my wife. Like but like I'm that. Like I just thought for a long time like you you wake up in the morning or whatever you walk past them you give them a pat on the ass or whatever yeah. and they don't like that no. like and we like yeah but I, i'd never really thought about it like they you're so much more connected when you walk up and you just have yep. a hug mm. and uh even just the, like the relationships between me and my wife um since i've sort of realized stuff like that like they're not they're not a piece of meat that you just should walk past no. and tap on the ass like you they respect you. You got to respect them. So, um, but it's unbelievable. And and like you said before, like your parents, my parents were very old fashioned. Yep. Um, yeah, everything got swept under the rug. Yep. You didn't talk about your emotions. You didn't no. talk about your problems. No. If, if you did talk about your problems, you, there was something wrong with you. Yep. Um, like it's powerful stuff, and it's incredible how when you get that out, if it, it, it honestly, like the day um, <clears throat> that you and I did that. Um, that cool to be conscious thing. I left there feeling the same way I did when we got to base camp at Everest. Yeah, like, right. it, uh, like all those exercises they took us through and releasing your anger and releasing your fears and all that sort of stuff. Like I walked out of that room like I was walking on a cloud. Yeah, same. It's, um, it's powerful stuff. It was awesome. It was so, awesome. Um, mate, what's, like, where, where to from here? Like how, how's just, so how does Justin chill out? What, what's Justin do? I do like to go for a surf when I can, yeah. you know, and then for me, I've, I've, as of late, I've just really been enjoying walking, actually. I've just really getting really into the walking and the, the walking, and that takes us back to Everest, you know. Yeah. Like, I really enjoyed that time 
yeah. you know, where we walk, you know. So for me, and you know, and for me, I like. I mean, I, I don't like mind watching a movie. Yeah. I, I'm, what's I'm, what's I'm your favourite movie, mate? I'm mean, just halfway through Free Guy, like I said before, at the moment. So that's uh, Ryan Reynolds, pretty funny sort of bloke. So I'm actually quite enjoying that one at the moment. You got to watch that. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, that's a new one, isn't it? Yeah, it's a new yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. um, like what? Any other hobbies, interests? Like so, build like is building your passion? Yeah, it always has been. You know, like when I first got into it, no, I, was, oh, I used to go, oh shit, this is too hard. You know, the body couldn't handle it. And everything. <laughs> yeah. But I'll just give you one other point. And like I said to, I, was, I pumped. And we we did this AFS wall system. I don't know if you know about it. The other day, <laughs> on Saturday, I pumped the uh, yeah. the the uh, AFS wall system with uh, the pumpies. And I and I these two blokes like they're rough around the edges, right? But they're yeah. nicest kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like they're always pumpies always got no teeth and <laughs> taking too many drugs in their life, you know. But you, but you got to look past that. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I mean they're yeah. the lo- loveliest kids, you know. And like and I don't mean kids are late twenties, but you yeah. know what I mean. But like for me. I just I started talking to him. I said, you know, I said, look, from an old dog to a young guy, I said, one thing you got to do is start stretching in the morning. I said, because <laughs> I've been doing that for the last six weeks, and yeah. I tell you, me being what nearly fifty next year, yeah. that my body is given up. Like it's never used to be like it used to be. Yeah. And I think it's stretching. I tell you, it's one thing I think you need to start doing. I tell you, it's just and I've been mean, telling my boys about stretching as well every morning. <laughs> and it has it's given me some a bit more limp, not as limber as I used to be, but I'm still trying yeah. to get there. Anyway. It's unreal, isn't it? Like we hear, you hear all these people say this stuff and talk about stuff, and you, you sort of, you just, it sneaks up on you. Like it you does. Get, you get a bit of age behind you, and like building is a hard game. Yep. Like especially if you're concreting or you're chippy on the tools all yep. day, it's it's a definitely a hard game. But so, like a way, like you're very passionate about your building. You're, you're passionate about your team, aren't you? Like you. I am. For me. I'm very passionate about my team. For me, I always say there's no I in team. And I yeah. and for me, I'm all about being a team. Like everyone yeah. has got each other's back, you know what yeah. I mean? And for me, you know, one of my boys, uh, he's he's a beautiful young human. And yeah. he's had he's lost two friends this year through suicide. Yeah. Three months, four months ago, oh probably probably a bit later than earlier than that. He was actually no, he was actually talking about ending yeah. his life you know yeah and i actually reached out to a mate of mine i used to go to school with who actually started mates in construction yeah so then we moved <clears> on to another thing then i actually helped him with all that you know standing beside yeah. him and everything for me you know mental health is bigger than what everyone thinks it is you know i mean everyone's well, inside what, their head what we're touching on it like it's getting blokes especially and, and in our industry don't talk yep like you got to talk to people. Yeah. Like, so yeah. and I you know, you know and that's what I'm saying about my team like for me and then there's another guy who works for me as well. His daughter got attacked by his dog yeah. on her face and she like lost half a lip and everything and he was not in a good headspace for nearly four to four. I told him to have two weeks off right yeah. because you know you need to go and sort yourself out because you're not yeah. here and they, but he's come back now and he's firing on all cylinders, you know what yeah. I mean? So you got to understand your team as well. And for me yeah. my team is a big thing cuz Without them, I don't have a business yeah. and I don't have anything. You know what yeah. I mean? So I invest in them a lot because, you know, honestly, I don't have anything without them, you know? Yeah. That's the way yeah. I look at it. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> another thing that we do, so we we do quite a lot together, mate. Yeah, we, we do, right? do actually. Um, we do. So I, I've done it for a really long time. We have a um, do a trip with our boys and what, probably four or five years ago. Yeah. We invited Justin and his boys along, so um, we haven't been able to do the last couple of years because of COVID. But um, we basically have it take all the boys to Fraser Island, um, and it was fantastic having another builder there, another team, because we we got some cricket going and a bit yeah. of touch footy, and um, like getting away with your team in that sort of environment. Like for me, it's a real learning experience because yeah. you like you, you can sort of get a little bit to know people on site and that work, but when you take them away for a three or four day thing where it's, I, I just love seeing the ones that jump in and yep. like help prepare the meals or like you get, we, we go up there uh, in August because we get on, we do the tailor fishing. So um, even just seeing the ones that jump in, get up early, help out with the fishing in the afternoon when you catch the fish, clean the fish, like it really, um, it's, it's good team building, hey, like oh, doing that is. sort of stuff. I'm the same. I like it. You actually sit back. 
and you see who actually is participating yeah. instead of the of the taker, you yeah. know, and then and then you realise who are the people you want within your yeah. business, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're the people that are looking after everyone else, but everyone else just beside themselves. Yeah. Mate, we've, I, I'm starting to laugh while you're talking. Like we, we've had some incredible experiences together. We like have. in uh, in Vegas, we learned a lot about each other. Yep, uh, and the rest of the, the rest of the crew that we we're with. Um, Everest. Uh, Justin uh, was dealing with some pretty bad altitude sickness <laughs> and uh, uh, ended up waking me up in the middle of the night, sitting on my bed in his jocks, rocking back and forth, um, <laughs> thinking he was dying. Um, and, uh, it was funny because leading up to that trip, we had, we had to do, we did a lot of, um, went to the doctors, did lots of checkups and I, I get uh, bad asthma. I went to my doctor and uh, just before I left and said, mate, like, Am I right? Like, can I do this? And he, he gave me the script. He, he's look if you if you get to a point where you think you're dying, just take one of these. And Justin's rocking on my bed in the middle of the night in his jocks, and I, I'm half asleep. I've just opened my bag, gave him the whole packet, said, "Here, mate, take take this." And it was uh, it was funny as. And then, um, yeah, and then we did another walk. Um, we did the Milford track over yeah. in New Zealand. That was uh, awesome. That was another fantastic trip. And yeah, like um my wife it, it was a couple thing and uh we actually we took my mother-in-law along and again just and i like just we just bond like um my mother-in-law's older she, she's from new zealand she wanted to do it um while she still could and just and i yeah worked together like you walked walked with her for a whole day held yep. her hand helped her up over rocks while i carried all the bag and stuff yep. it was uh we've had some incredible experiences yeah, together have, and then just the the one that's making me laugh while you're talking uh, was your was your boy at uh, Fraser Island? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, but doing these Shay, trips, Shay was even there, weren't you, mate? <laughs> yeah. So um, we do these trips, and it is so good. Like I'm, I'm a big believer in everyone has to cut loose every now and then. Just, just whatever. Get, have a few beers. Like everyone's got their poison, I think. That, yep. but you've got to have a release. And every now and then, getting on the piss with the boys and just ha- cutting loose is not a bad thing. Um, but yeah, I think the the guy, one of your guys, had only been with you a few weeks or a couple of months or something, hadn't he? And there was a bit of pressure to to fit in with all the all the crew. And uh, anyway, one thing led to another. We, we had this enormous bonfire happening, and um, one thing led to another. And before we know it. Uh, one of the boys was probably had a little bit too much to drink and uh, started doing a strip tease around the fire, didn't he? And yeah. before we know it, had thrown all his clothes in the fire and <laughs> didn't know what he was doing and uh, then uh, went on to perform a couple of backflips naked. <laughs> naked. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, oh, that was an eye opener. Oh, yeah. mate, I'd never seen anything like it. I, I could not believe it. But. Um, then we had the backpackers we, up the road joining up. They saw him do the bomb fight. Yeah, backflip. <laughs> we're having uh, we're having such a good time and cheering and just cutting loose. And then yeah. um, turned around behind me and there was there was three blokes standing be, behind me. And I looked around. And I was like, Stop, "Look, guys, we we don't come to Fraser to stand around a fire and watch naked guys dance." And they're like, "Mate, this is friggin' awesome! Like, we're over there camping with our families. You guys are having a ball. All we can hear is the noise. We want to come over and check this shit out." <laughs> <laughs> um, it's like that. It's just it lifelong memories, isn't it? It is, like, yeah. Um, well, mate, look, really appreciate your time awesome. and uh, having a chat with us. I, I reckon you've helped a lot of guys out. I, I do think um, for everyone out there, like seeing a big, strong bloke like yourself opening up and talking about the stuff that you do is um, it's a game changer yep. and. It, uh, I'm sure it's going to help uh, change a few lives or even save a few lives. So uh, that's another episode of Level Up, guys. Hope you've got a lot out of it and uh, we'll see you on the next one.